All right, so I want to talk first about hatching and then we'll move on to the painting. Um, I picked one of the smaller letters I had drawn uh, just so maybe the demo would go a little faster. Um, I'm planning to be over here. Can you guys still hear me okay? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, so just um, going back to how we were talking a little bit about the lighting and you know what type of lighting might be chosen for your letter. Can you see that right now, and maybe if I put this on a, a darker ground, it's a little clearer, um, but do you see how there's a light side, a dark side, and I would call it interior here, a medium side? If you don't have black behind it, because most of you, your paper is white, um, look how much darker this dark side looks, you know, when there's not black behind it. And um, what I really think would be, you know, the best to visualize is this, um, these letters against sort of a gray. So do you see where, you know, you might want to have some value um, behind your letter so that it can stand out a little bit? Uh, I did have a letter already shaded that also kind of demonstrates this. Um, so here's the letter R, where I wanted to leave the light side of the letter more or less white. And the only way to do that is to create value in the space behind it. Uh, where you can go really wrong with this is having almost a halo effect around the letter, but then leaving the rest of the space white. So you want to be thinking about your whole composition, the whole space you're creating, and how the light's going to work within that. Um, also, in terms of observing lighting, uh, if you have a physical letter uh, or if you'd like me to take a picture of a letter for you, um, I'd be happy to do that. But if you can get a flashlight, you can sort of imagine what a direct light source might do to the cast shadow. So you, do you guys see the cast shadow sort of changing as I move the, um, the light around? So obviously that's not the view most of you guys are doing. You're doing something like this. Um, that's just a little bit hard for me to illustrate um, with this camera set up. So, um, you know, as you look at it at home, you know, if you have a letter or if you made letters, you can play with which of these sides will be the light, medium, and dark. And with a more direct light source, do you see how it exaggerates those darks? How you know, now what we've got is a light left side, a medium right side, and an extra dark kind of inside to the letter. Now this is on the horizon line. If we move a little below the horizon line, you know, your letter's below the horizon line, maybe it's lit from above. You can see how that changes it. Um, maybe it's above the horizon line, but lit from above. And see how now, it's kind of hard to see, how the bottom of the letter is the darkest and the insides. So you can do a lot of visualizing if you have something, even a box to look at, you know, even, I mean, this is just a plug, right? But you can still light it and see, you know, kind of a light, medium and dark side. And that may um, be beneficial to you. I, like I said, I have a lot of letters here and I'd be happy to also just give you, you know, make a visual for you, um, you know, photograph it with some different lighting um, to help you out. So I'm going to go ahead and shade this B and grab a pen. So like I mentioned before, you know, shading these, you want to go in an effective direction um, for the form of the letter. And, you know, if this was just a box, and I'm actually looking at it, it's on the horizon line. So if I'm just thinking of this as a simple box, um, I'm really just going to have a light side and a dark side. By the time I've cut out, you know, this 
plane in the middle, I really will have, um, you know, three sides to think about. But when I go, um, you know, when I do this, this side of the letter, I want to go back to the vanishing point, which actually means changing angle, you know, from angling down to angling up as I travel down the letter. So the effective directions to shade this side with cross hatching would be either perfectly up and down or in the direction of the vanishing point. I know that's so, so tiny, but by contrast, if I had a the same box and I decided to shade it this way, and then I decided to shade the other side this way, that doesn't really help me understand the form. If anything, it, it actually makes it harder to understand. So if you can follow those lines back to the vanishing point, that is really the way um, to shade that. Now, I think I mentioned earlier that the darkest part of the shadow is actually the cast shadow. So after you've decided what your light side is going to be, and I think I'm going to make the front my light side. Um, this will be my medium side, just based off of when I was lighting this. And I'm going to leave the interior, the upper inside part, as my darkest um, dark. Then the only thing that's left to do is that cast shadow. Now you're, again, you're not required to watch all those videos and, and figure out exactly, you know, the technical way to do this. But I think having a little understanding of how you create that space would be helpful. Um, so that's how I'm, I'm planning to do this. So for my lightest value, or even before I do the lightest value, you know, if I want to leave that white, I'm going to create a little bit of um, line variation on the letter itself. So I want the heaviest line to be this line. Um, these edges that are closest to me, and that actually means I'm using my ruler to make the line wider. So I'm almost tracing it and then scooting the ruler over a little bit and tracing it again um, just to thicken that line. And then as I go back in space, I'm going to let the line get thinner. So, um, you know, the closer part of the line to me will be thicker, the lighter part down here will be thinner. Maybe I'm even barely um, touching the paper. One kind of danger of adding this line variation is that you rely on lines to show where the plane changes. So what I mean by that is if I have this box and I have it outlined, I don't need to shade it at all to explain where it changes from one side to the other. If I had no outlines at all and I was only relying on value, I would absolutely have to show a difference in value to have that plane change show up. No outlines means you are really relying on the tone to communicate that. So you should understand that this is still, you know, it's still critical to have a plane change based on value even if you do add this line variation. Now, if I'm thinking about kind of the most time consuming, um, discipline requiring part of this whole job of shading, it's probably going to be the background. Um, you know, getting that value established 
feels like it's going to be probably the most time consuming. Doing the actual letter uh, probably won't be so bad. So if I want this to be the light side, and I know I haven't done a, a whole composition here, um, so let me just kind of make up what that might look like. So we have the benefit of a Plane. And guys, don't take off points because it's a closed composition. I know it doesn't go off the page, but my cast shadow will go off the page, which will help. So I know I want the light side of this to be a light value. I want the dark, you know, interior. That's going to be the darkest. So I'm just going to pick one area and going in the direction of the vanishing point. I'm going to try to establish what my darkest or one of my darkest values is going to be. The sooner you establish the range, uh, the easier it will be to create it. If you just start light and try to keep working darker, it's probably going to take you a really long time to get there. And then the medium value uh, will be on this side of the letter. I'm going to use that ruler to find some of those angles so that as I shade, I'm going back to the vanishing point. Um, so here, let me try to get that curve. As I go down, I try to work with more straight lines. And again, I'm going for a value that's darker than nothing, you know, darker than white, um, but also not going to be mistaken for this, this black. Now, this is not natural for me to do curves in this direction. I, I really find that I just turn the drawing to whatever is the most comfortable for me. And sometimes that means I'm constantly turning, <laughs> turning it. there's kind of a, a natural angle that's typically the most comfortable for people. So I'm just putting a little bit of value in. I'm going to get, I mentioned earlier that angle going back to the vanishing point. And before I go too dark or get too much more committed, I do want to figure out what's it going to take to make this, um, you know, to let this light side of the letter be light uh, and not be mistaken for the background. Now I have a horizon line and I find, I think it looks better when you acknowledge the horizon line. So I'm going to make a mark for that. Again, it's kind of one of those things where if the angle changes of your marks, uh, I think it helps. Um, if you think about some of the depth cues we've learned about, one of them is uh, size diminution, one is overlap, and the last one that we, I feel like, haven't handled a whole lot is value diminution. So I think um, value diminution could be your friend here. Uh, with regard to the horizon line. You can get a little darker as you get closer to the horizon line. You can get a little lighter as you come into the foreground. And I'm actually just kind of lifting my pen up as I do that. I got two different angles going here, which isn't terribly attractive. I can tell you why, too, because I didn't turn the paper. So I gotta go with my natural angle here. See, isn't that better? Uh, and, you know, several sets of lines are fine, too. So, you know, just in terms of creating depth, I'm kind of thinking about a gradient here see through that. 
so I want to keep them all consistent. Now, if you squint right now, there's areas of this background that are more or less the same as the areas of this medium value of the B. So I want to keep an eye on that and make sure I'm creating enough contrast as uh, I continue with this drawing. Um, we are looking at, you know, the, the horizon line as one of the lines. So if we want to use horizontal lines here, that would be fine. So I'm kind of looking for different reasons to uh, make a line on the upper part, we can call it the sky. Um, maybe you want to change direction, uh, create a gradient in a different way. You know, it could also be that you create a dark gradient. You know, it starts dark up here and actually fades lighter as it comes down. You know, atmospheric perspective, right? So, you know, the ground very close to you could be quite dark and then it could actually fade as it goes back in space. That would make, I think, just as much sense. Now, does doing both make sense? I don't know. Um, this is about the point where I probably need to make a decision about a cast shadow. Just realized I never put anything here, but this is part of my medium side, right? And there may be a point where it's good to have all of this the same value, but you don't want to lose that plane change. So that's where, you know, I might darken one edge, you know, just enough to really make it distinct that the plane does, does change, even though they have a similar lighting situation. Um, so in terms of a cast shadow, I think I mentioned already that it's the darkest of any shadow. I have a example here. It's done in, in pencil, so it's not going to be that jet black, but you can see the darkest parts of the letter are, um, you know, these, these deep dark shadows and then the base where it joins and then it fades out from there. So as I look at this letter, you know, I'm going to kind of imagine a uh, um, a light source that's maybe a little bit behind, so the, the shadow is casting forward a little bit. And it's going to be quite dark. Especially where it touches this letter. You know how I'm feeling right now? I wish I would have left this a little lighter because I can only go darker um, with this cast shadow and eventually there's not going to be any darker that I can go. So this is where I think that practice really um, pays off. Uh, let's get those darkest and you know this background I mean it doesn't have much going on in it but it's not really empty either so you know I'm not sure you need to cover every square inch of your drawing in order to um, explain the space. I think these vertical lines look a little more helpful over here in the background where there's curves happening. Um, I think on this side over here where there's straight up and down that gets a little more, um, you know, easily mistaken. So let's keep going with that dark, darkest side in here. I want to curve with the curve of the letter. And or make sure I'm heading back to the vanishing point. You know, the darker you need to go, the more different directions you'll need to use. And it, it could be that at some point you just find yourself patching in any old direction, and that's fine. Just make sure that the dominant marks, if they're showing through, are marks that 
um, reflect where the vanishing point is or what the curve of the plane is. Are you guys still there? Yes. Okay. So if the light is coming from above, it still might be hitting in here, you know? Um, but I don't want these to be exactly the same. So I think I'll leave this lighter than the top part is. But I won't leave it exactly the same. Maybe I'll do a little bit right here at the edge. I kind of wanted to try the, this background getting darker. So on this side, I'm just kind of experimenting. How does this look? I don't know. You know, where they both fade darker instead of fading lighter. I guess it's okay. I'm not in love with it. I think I like this background situation better. And if you feel like the values are getting um, mixed up at some point, you know, they're one's too close to the other. It doesn't mean you have to change the value of the entire letter. You might just change it right where you need it to change. Do you see how I'm, you know, pushing it darker just here, just at the edge? That doesn't really make it feel like it doesn't fit the rest of the letter. It just helps separate it right there where that edge is. And now if you squint, or maybe you don't even have to squint, um, you can see kind of what that uh, letter is doing. You know, as I'm looking at it, I think one spot that I might have goofed up is, I think this actually would be in more shadow, possibly. And I think this area actually should have been in light. I think the light would be coming down and hitting at least the very front of it. So I kind of would like to lighten this up if I were to do this again. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions about cross-hatching? I've got another example here where I think I did a little better job of the keeping this light. Now granted that got very dark. And I've got another example. Well, I already showed you the R. I've got this M blown up quite a bit larger, and I think I talked about that one already. I really highly recommend um, doing a little, you know, five or six step value scale. It doesn't have to be big, but, you know, leave the first one white and try to get different stages that get you to black by the end. Five, if you were able to achieve five different values, or even, like I said, even three, I think you'll get, um, you know, enough range to complete this project. Okay, um, I'm not sure if there is more interest in the 
hatching and cross hatching or in the painting would you guys like to see more hatching examples or would you like to see a painting demonstration i would like to see the painting demo demonstration okay. i'd like to see the painting as well right. and